Hi students, today I am going to discuss about heavy metal poisoning. Before this, we will see the what is mean by heavy metals. Heavy metals are metallic chemical elements and having high density. Here mean density means we have these metals having high value and these heavy metals are all toxic or poisonous in even at low concentrations. These are all high density heavy metals and also having toxic or poisonous even at low concentration. These are the some of the examples of heavy metals are mercury, arsenic, lead, aluminium, cadmium, copper and iron. These are some of the examples of heavy metals. Next we will see the the toxicity of heavy metals depends upon the number of factors. The toxicity or person of the heavy metals will depend upon the following factors. First one is the total dose absorbed. Here yeah, that means how much dose or quantity of particular heavy metals are absorbed by the patient. This depending upon the dose of the heavy metals. Next acute or chronic exposure. That means here length of the exposure or the length of the time of exposure is main factor depending upon the poison of the heavy metals. Here acute means the toxicity will occur suddenly. Here chronic means the toxicity will occur slowly developed. This toxicity will develop very slowly. Acute means the toxicity occurs very suddenly. Next here also we will see this heavy metal poisoning or toxicity depends upon the age of the person. It, it may mainly the heavy metal poisons are mainly attacked to children or geriatrics that means old patients because their immunity power will be less. Their immune response will be low. That's why it will mainly occur to the children and old age people. Next the route of exposure. This toxicity also depending upon the route of exposure. These are some of the factors depending upon the heavy metal toxicity. Next we will see the common treatment for this all heavy metal poisoning. There will be a summon common treatment for this heavy metal poisonings. Yeah. Okay. The first treatment is removal of the patient from the source of exposure. Removal of the patient from the source of exposure. That means for example if the person or the patient is working in an aluminium factory and he attacked with the aluminium toxicity or poisoning. In this case first we want to make the patient to not go to the company. Why? Because his source of aluminium toxicity is the company. From company only he is getting that aluminium exposure. Like that in every poisoning we want to remove the patient first from the source of exposure. Next one is resuscitation. Resuscitation means it is normally stabilization and evaluation by the what we discussed in the uh, previous videos that is stabilization and evaluation. First we want to check the stabilization and we want to evaluate the patient. In that mainly we want to go for ABC that means we want to check airway, breathing and circulation of the patient. Then only we will go for if the patient need any electrolytes. If the patient have any electrolyte disturbances then we want to replace the fluid and electrolytes to the patients. Now after this only we will go for the decontamination. Decontamination means already you know this is the we are removing the poisoning from the stomach. Mainly for this heavy metal poisons we are doing the technique whole bowl irrigation. We are doing the technique whole bowl irrigation that means we are cleaning the complete stomach with PEG polyethylene glycol electrolyte solution. First we want to remove the patient from the exposure. Next we want to stabilize and evaluate the patient. Next one we want to go for decontamination. After this the main treatment we used in heavy metal poisoning is chillation. Okay, the chillation is a very very important treatment in heavy metal poisoning. We will use this chillation therapy only in this heavy metal toxicity. Okay, this chillation can done by the chillating agents. This chillation is can, can done by the chillating agents. Chillating agents are nothing but these are the 
chemical compounds that react with the metal ions that means heavy metals in forms a stable water soluble complex it forms a stable water soluble complex this chelating agents also called has chill chillants chillator sequestering agents chillants chillators or sequestering agents these are all we are using in the treatment of the heavy metal poisoning next we will see the mechanism action of this chillating agents normally this heavy metals are not soluble in the water and this won't eliminate falsely from the body in this case we are using the treatment of chillating agent the chillators will increase the elimination of the heavy metals from the body why we are using chillators to increase the heavy metals from to increase the heavy metal excretion from the body normally the chillators will excre excrete this heavy metal from the urine okay this is about the mechanism of the chillating agent next we will see the ideal properties of this chillating agents otherwise chillators this chillators are low order of toxicity this chillating agents have does not have any toxicity if toxicity is there that is also very low toxicity next this chillating agents are do not redistribute to the other organs only this will act on the heavy metals and it will eliminate the heavy metals from the body that uh, that much only this chillators are does not distribute the other parts of the body next in this chillating agents eliminates quickly without breakdown normally these chillators also chemical substance but this won't break down in the body and it eliminates falsely through the urine next the contraindications of chillating agents are in these conditions we should not use this chillation therapy in case of liver failure during iron supplementation if the patient is taking any iron supplementation in that condition we should not use this chillating agents next peanut allergy if the patient have peanut allergy if the patient have glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency in this four conditions we should not use this chillation therapy okay next we have the some of the examples of chillating agents here here the agents are dimeric aprol also we will call bal also we also call british anti levisate dimeric aprol or british anti levisate this an antidote oh, sorry this antidote or chillating agents will used in arsenic mercury and lead poisoning next we have next chillating agent dimeric apto succinic acid dimeric apto succinic acid we also call as succimer this will be used in lead poisoning next we'll have calcium disodium editate edta calcium disodium editate this will be used in lead poisoning next penicillamine penicillamine will be used in lead mercury and copper poisonings and also we'll have desferoxamine desferoxamine we can used in iron poisoning and also we'll have defi repron defi repron we can used it in a iron poisoning these are some of the examples of chillating agent different chillating agents we are going to used in different type of poisonings okay next we will see the detailed information about some of the important chillating agents like dimeric aprol edta and penicillamine we'll see first one dimeric aprol dimeric aprol also called has british anti levisate this is a medication normally used to treat arsenic mercury and lead poisonings why we are calling dimeric aprol as british anti levisate means first we'll see british here this medication is developed by the british biochemists at oxford university during world war 2 that's why we are calling it as a british why we are calling anti levisate means this medication is will be used as a antidote for levisate antidote for levisate that's why anti levisate what is mean by this levisate levisate is a organo arsenic compound before the world war 1 this levisate is manufactured in the us japan and germany and it is used as a chemical weapon at the time of world war 1 used as a chemical weapon at world war 
दिस केमिकल वेपन और एक्ट एज ए बेसिकेंट्स एंड लंग इरीटेंट दिस केमिकल वेपन इज एक्ट हैज ए बेसिकेंट एंड लंग इरीटेंट दैट मीन्स इट कॉसेज सीवियर स्किन आई एंड सीवियर स्किन आई एंड म्यूकोसल पेन एंड इरीटेशन इन मेक्स द पर्सन मोर इल एंड इट ऑल्सो कॉसेज पेनफुल वाटर ब्लिस्टर्स ऑन द स्किन फॉर दिस लिविसेट for uh, acting against the levisate only they prepared this dimeric aprol mm, who prepared this dimeric aprol british biochemist that's why is calling as a british anti levisate okay next we will see the some of the adverse effect the effects of this dimeric aprol or high blood pressure pain at injection site vomiting fever and this uh, dimeric aprol is contraindicated in peanut allergic persons or peanut allergic patients the route of administration of this dimeric aprol is intramuscular route next the uses of this dimeric aprol are lead and arsenic poisoning it is also used as antidote to the chemical weapon levisate and also we can use it as a wilson's disease wilson's disease means it is a genetic disorder that means when there is a copper is build up build inside the liver and other tissues when the copper is accumulated in the liver that condition is called a wilson disease in this three conditions we are using this dimeric caprol next one is pensy okay pencilamine this pencilamine is discovered by the john walshy john walshy is the first described the use of pencilamine in wilson's disease in 1956 he was the first described the use of pencilamine in wilson's disease in 1956 he had discovered that this compound is presented in the urine of the patient who is taking penicillin penicillin is the one of the antibiotic the patients who is taking the penicillin they this john walshy found that this penicillin in their urine this experimentally confirmed that it is increased urine copper excretion by chelation okay what he finded in the urine of the patients who is taking penicillin he founded this penicillin in that urine only he founded this penicillin this penicillin is increasing the copper excretion through the urine by the process of chelation he founded this including himself he also taken penicillin at that time he also found the same thing in his urine sample also okay that's why we confirmed this penicillin is mainly used in the copper poisoning the adverse effect of this penicillin is rash loss of appetite nausea diarrhea low wbc levels white blood cells levels and also we can use this penicillin in thro oral route the uses of this penicillin is rheumatoid arthritis wilson's disease scleroderma kidney stones and also we'll used in heavy metal poisonings here scleroderma means it is a hardening and tightening of the skin and connective tissue hardening of the skin this mostly affects to the women this scleroderma mostly affect to the women in these conditions we are going to use this penicillin chelating agent okay the next one is edta calcium disodium editate this edta came into the medical use in 1953 normally first this edta used in the lead poisoning along with the dimeric aprol we won't use this edta as a single chelating agent we'll combine with the dimeric aprol and we will used in the lead poisoning normally this edta is a salt of editate with two sodium and one calcium atom that's why calcium disodium two sodium and one calcium atom is containing in the cdta that's why we are calling cal- calcium disodium okay it works by binding to the heavy metals which allows them to leave from the urine same like the chelating agents mechanism okay the side effects or adverse effect of this edta are pain at injection site kidney problems diarrhea fever muscle pains low blood pressure these are the some of the adverse effects of this edta
okay this is all about the heavy metal poisonings in their general or common treatment of heavy metal poisonings the common treatment will used in heavy metal poisons are chelation therapy the chelating agents also call as a heavy metal antagonists okay all of you understood thank you